Hey there everybody, this is Vern Kerrigan, and we're going to make another little episode of my series Let's Play Zoo Tycoon. When we left off, we had finished our penguin exhibit, put in a restaurant, which made uh, $3,000 in its first two months of operation, and we talked about... Uh, what animals we want to get next. I think I've settled on Bengal tigers and white Bengal tigers. And then maybe I'll get polar bears, but I sort of always get polar bears. So I might go for something a little bit cooler. Maybe one of... maybe some black bears. Or a moose. Hmm. Anywho, let's get this game unpaused and go over what's happening. Uh, medium grassy zoo. Um... If you guys come up with any good names for a zoo, please leave it in the comments, and I will find the one that I like the most, and be sure to rename my zoo to that, because I don't really have any ideas at the moment. Uh, if we look at our balance sheet, uh, in December, the month that we put in the restaurant, we made three times more concessions than in any other month, which is fantastic. Um, we have a blue ribbon. Our zoo rating has been steadily going up. Our zoo attendance is dropped off a little bit. I'll have to try and change that, but the money is now coming in much more quickly than it was before. So I am very excited to get back into this. I took a couple of days off making episodes because uh, my sister was heading back to college, and so I just needed to spend time with the family and all that jazz that they like to make movies about, but really isn't all that interesting. So now I'm back, and we're going to get going. Uh, what do I want to do? For whatever reason, our zookeeper is being really stupid. Uh, he's having trouble getting to the penguin exhibit. I guess what I could do is put an entrance over here. Because I did have the entrance over here, by the entrance of the zoo, but now that uh, now that I have more exhibits, I want to try and centralize these uh, entrance and exit gates so that my zookeepers can move a little bit more efficiently between the two exhibits. Uh, if I can find my zookeeper again, going to Penguin, we'll just plop him down in there, because he seems to be having trouble getting there himself. Let's see, anything interesting happening? I think I'm going to make sort of uh, an area like this, except a little bit fancier over here. The bang... no, never mind. The Bengal Tigers are going to go over here. And then my square will maybe go here? On the other side of the Bengal Tigers, maybe? I don't know, we'll, we'll see how the chips fall. Our maintenance workers are fixing fences and emptying out trash cans, which is fantastic. So, it seems our guests have stabilized at about 250. Ooh, the month ended. Oh my goodness. We made tons of money last month. We didn't even get an award, and we got $8,500 of private donations, in addition to our 3000 or so concession sales. And as you can see here, we're getting recycling money, and that's from the compost area that I put in over here. So, we're at $16,000. Our money is going up nicely. So, I think that means it is time to pick a fence type. I think I will go with the plexiglass exhibit fence, because as everyone knows, tigers are somewhat dangerous animals, and I don't want... I just want my guests to feel safe, really. Uh, I'm going to start by marking out an area like this, so it's going to be a fairly narrow exhibit this way, but it'll be plenty long the other way. Normally, I use... Uh, <sighs> that's annoying. Uh, oh no! Goodness, my gazelles are just dying off. Um, maybe, maybe the population is stabilized, though. Uh, we have our six penguins, nine gazelles. We'll, we'll make sure that those gazelles don't 
go extinct or anything like that. What was I saying? Oh yes, normally I use these plexiglass exhibits for aquatic type uh, exhibits, such as this, or uh, if I were to have maybe sea lions, I think is in this. Yeah, California sea lions, I would use this exhibit fence, because that's what we have at the local zoo. Z Zool. Local zoo here in Portland. But I'm going to uh, go with this, and I'm broke again. Wow, $13,000. Uh, it's a lot more expensive than this fence I use for the penguins. This is $150 per unit, and the low chain link fence is only 45 There we go, our gazelles are giving birth again, so... I think it would be fantastic if their population just sort of stabilized at 9 or 10. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, yeah. Mm, 10 to 14, because that's how many shelters I have, and I don't want to add any more in, just because that's a little bit of work, and I'm lazy. But that's a good number. It ensures that guests will always want to go over there, but I don't have the problem that I usually have with something like lions or the Bengal tigers do it also, where they reproduce like rabbits and you just have way too many of them. Let's grab Zoopathing, because now that we're back over $5,000, we can buy a little bit more path. Just put a little loop around it so that when we do end up putting the tigers in, they'll ha guess we'll have a place to walk and then as it gets more and more popular you start to want to uh, expand that walkway around more and more because if the crowd is too dense around an exhibit the animals start feeling like they don't have enough privacy and there are not enough shelters I must have they must have given birth because I think I only put in four penguins so that's great. Uh, if I check real quick... Yeah, we have six penguins. Two of them are little bitty baby penguins. Uh, one just went into a shelter. See them swimming around there. And what Bengal tigers like is a lot of rainforest terrain. Some grass, I think a little bit of dirt and sand, and then fresh water, obviously. All animals that don't swim in salt water need fresh water to drink. And so you want to make sure to put that in, otherwise they will start complaining at you. It's not a bar that they have, like their hunger bar, but I think it helps keep them healthy and it definitely decreases their uh, exhibit suitability if they don't have anything to drink. Now you can see here on the front side of this exhibit, that the fences are getting damaged. That's one of the things that maintenance workers do. Does. Does? Maintenance workers fix fences in addition to cleaning up trash. I'll just put it that way. So these aren't dangerous right now, but if no one gets around to fixing these, they'll start to deteriorate more. And then if they break completely, then your animals will make a beeline for the exit and your guests will start running away and everyone gets angry at you. Sometimes you'll have your animals confiscated because you aren't treating them properly because the animals start thinking that everything in your zoo is their exhibit and of course having restaurants and terrain and other such things is no good in an actual exhibit but is uh, quite nice for having a zoo in general. Another month ended, another $6,000 of private donations. Our concessions are starting to die off, probably because our zoo admissions are... Oh, admissions were strong in February, but we aren't getting a bunch more people who need their needs fulfilled coming in, which is why I want to uh, try and hurry up this building process as much as I can. Luckily, with the restaurant averaging, you know, $1,500 of profit every month, it makes my job a lot easier. Because that's, you know, without that, I would be making only about 
1,700 in concessions, and my guests would not be nearly as happy as they are. Out of 270 guests, eight of them are thirsty and one of them has to go to the bathroom, and I would say that's pretty good for any zoo, let alone uh, just one that's been thrown together over the course of an hour and a half of game time, which equates to one year and three months. So maybe... I don't know, I was trying to do the time conversion in my head, and I just realized I completely forgot to start my timer just a second while I do that. But I was trying to equate the the real time that I've spent playing to how much time has passed in the game, but then I realized that I've been cutting out, so even though I have about an hour of footage, and an hour and a half of playtime, that's really not quite as applicable. At least I think it's an hour and a half of playtime. It's somewhere around there. Anywho, that's about that. Um, I set my timer for 20 minutes, so whenever that timer goes off, that's when I'm going to end the video, because I really don't like producing parts over 30 minutes. I, as a person who watches Let's Play... Oh no, my gazelles are still dying. There are more shelters than necessary. Oh dear. Uh, let's get rid of that one. Is that good? Okay. Uh, as someone who watches Let's Plays on a fairly regular basis, I don't really like watching episodes longer than 30 minutes. It's a very large chunk of time, and I sort of get lost. I forget what's gone on at the beginning. Part of that is probably some of my gamer ADD, but it's also just you know, rambling on for 30 minutes, you sort of really do start to ramble on. Animal fertility is nice, it makes it so animals reproduce more. And uh, so I just don't really want to talk for that long. It's just not quite as fun for me. And if I'm not having fun making these, then I'm probably going to stop. So that's why there's 20 minutes. That was a rather long-winded explanation for something that was really probably a lot simpler. Bamboo is... Ah, pandas. Maybe I'll get pandas at some point. I... They're so cute. I love pandas. Uh, let's throw in some more rainforest terrain. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Bengal tigers really love rainforest terrain, and I hope I have their favorite tree. Uh, the rainforest... Yes, the mangrove tree is, I believe, the Bengal tiger's uh, favorite foliage. Yes. And so they're, they'll be happier with a smaller amount of mangrove trees. You can fill up their uh, need for foliage very quickly by using a particular animal's favorite foliage as opposed to what I had to do with these gazelles, which was uh, put mixed foliage that in their case, isn't savanna grass. So hopefully, because I've researched animal fertility, my gazelles will stop dying off. I really don't want to have to adopt more in order to keep the exhibit going, but I definitely will if I have to. I think if I can get all this stuff in, all this terrain change in, and then get up to fifteen thousand dollars I'll have enough to put in my tigers and then put foliage in the exhibit and make any small terrain changes uh, they'll probably want a little bit more they'll need grass obviously I'm gonna cover the whole thing with rainforest terrain because that's what they want the most and then it'll be relatively cheap to fill in the dirt and the sand and the grass and the water after that Where's the entrance? Good. So now we have all three of our exhibit entrances over here. And be sure to comment if I'm doing anything horrendously wrong. Like, if putting these all together is horribly bad and makes it that, so that zookeepers go from here to here to here without actually cleaning up an exhibit, be sure to let me know, because as I've said before, I only really played this game a lot as a kid, and since I've uh, been in high school. I've picked it up a few times, but never played it uh, and actually thought about what I was doing beyond the gravity thing that I've talked about in previous episodes. So, 
what I can do now is, now that I have a new area for guests to go to, I can get a new food stand. I'm just going to quickly layer this up to three thick, because that's where I want stuff to be. I don't want anything closer than three thick, and I forgot about that with my reptile house and these bathrooms, but I'm not going to go back and fix it, because I'm lazy. So let's get pizza and ice cream. And I also want a high gravity building. So let's put the aviary. I believe that was the last conservation building that I got. So now people should start coming over towards this area and spending their money here. And that will draw them away from this area. But because it keeps them in the zoo longer, it helps me get more and more people in while they're loitering about over here. And so, all in all, it will get more people in my zoo, and about the same amount of traffic will go to where it's already at. Already is, not at. That's, that's one of my pet peeves, um, saying at at the end of your sentences. Um, which program do we want? So it's 150 for plus 8, plus 5. Nothing for plus 5, plus 3. Or 200 for plus 10, plus 15. I think I'll go with that one because uh, $200 a month is absolutely nothing and happiness really is great to have. I, I thoroughly dislike it when guests are unhappy because that means that they're going to leave the zoo and once they start leaving the zoo they start leaving it in droves and that's no good whatsoever. Looking around at my trash cans, I notice that I have a bit of a trash problem. I have four trash cans over here. They're all full. That one's full. These three are full. I believe I saw one... Oh, I don't even have one over here. I should put those in. Because uh, trash is another thing that will very quickly uh, swamp your zoo, and it's very hard to get rid of. So, noticing how much there is, I'm going to pay another $300 a month and put in another maintenance worker because I just don't like it when trash starts littering the walkways and it really does do it so quickly. These trash cans hold so much. I uh, got a couple more, uh, pff, a couple more research and conservation stuff, the bamboo and the large chimpanzee bars. A good thing we're getting soon is tour guide training one. Tour guides are something I haven't put in yet because I don't really have a need for them. Guests will naturally go over here into the aviary on their own without very much in the way of me pulling them there, or pushing them there, as it were. The gravity pulls them places. What the tour guide does is it gets a whole group of people together and it pulls them around to all the different exhibits. So if you have a tour guide stationed at the front, a good way to keep guests in your zoo for a long time, if you're trying to say hit a thousand and you're at 900, I would place him, place the tour guide here, assign him to the gazelle exhibit, and then I would assign him to take the people from the gazelle exhibit to this exhibit and then back over to the penguins, and then over here, and then to Bengal tigers, and then there. And so he'll keep that same group all the way around the zoo. And so that's another way you can force people into running laps around your zoo. So I think I have enough money now to fill this whole area in. Yes, I do. May have made me a little bit broke, but that doesn't really matter. I should have placed those trash cans differently. I am displeased with how I place those trash cans, but mistakes happen, so I'm not going to bother fixing them. Uh, our aviary isn't really pulling anyone over, probably because there's nothing over here that they also want to see. Generally, these high gravity things will work to a certain extent, but every guest that comes over here is a guest not over here. 
because I don't have the Bengal Tigers. For those of you who've played Cities XL, a game I've been watching Let's Plays of recently, uh, services travel along roads. So, we have services over here, things people want. And then, there's a service over here that people want. But, people don't want to travel these roads. There's no reason for people to be on these pathways to go here. Whereas, once I put the tigers in, they will have a very good excuse to be on this pathway. Uh, they'll want to be looking at the tigers, and then they'll go over to the aviary. So, you know, you can see we're getting a few people drawn off that main path there, but really not all that many. And we still have a really healthy number of people over here looking at the gazelles, keeping these hot dog and drink stands profitable. Uh, this burger stand is doing pretty well, 400 a month. The restaurant is up to over 2,000 a month. This drink stand, I'm going to get rid of. Uh, it was making a profit, it made a profit, but the restaurant eclipses it in so many ways. The restaurant provides the drinks and all the other stuff as well, which means people want to go to the restaurant a lot more than they want to go to a drink stand. Uh, checking my timer real quick, I really want to get these tigers in this episode, and I'll, I will go over time if it means I can get the tigers in, but not just the. But if I get the tigers in and then the episode, or and then my timer goes off, I'm just going to end the episode there and call it good. Something I talked about last episode that never really happened was having to uh, crunch down a video, having to accelerate a video to like 103% or whatever it was. That never actually ended up happening because I uploaded it and YouTube said, ah, your upload is too long, we have to reject this. Uh, well, that's weird. I thought I had activated the account so I could put up really long videos. Maybe by really long, I had, I in my mind I said really long, but in actuality it was 30 minutes and this video is a little over 30 minutes, so I'll just crunch down a little bit and it made it sound really, really terrible. And then I looked again, and I hadn't activated the YouTube account, I hadn't verified it with my cell phone. So I had a 15 minute video restriction. And so I felt a little bit sheepish, and so the second episode went up just fine after that, and I'm back to uh, my normal program. I use Windows Movie Maker because it exports an HD file that sounds fine and looks fine and isn't 200 gigabytes, unlike the HD codec my computer has for Sony Vegas uh, Pro. So I'll have to look for a solution to that, but for now, Movie Maker is fine, and I think I have enough money we will put in one male and one female of each type of Bengal tiger. That leaves us with $3,000. It's not enough grass, not enough dirt, too much rainforest. Okay, I guess they don't need sand, but we're going... Uh, that's savanna grass. That's sand. There we go. We're going to stick in dirt, just sort of surrounding this. Not enough grass, too much rainforest, and then we'll put little dots of normal grass in here. Something I have noticed about the Bengal Tigers and White Bengal Tigers is um, they have ever so slightly different uh, needs for foliage. The White Bengal Tiger likes two more mangrove trees than the normal Bengal tiger does. So there is a one mangrove tree spot where they're both happy. And plus one off of that, the Bengal tiger gets angry, and minus one, the white Bengal tiger gets angry. So we need shelters in the exhibit, obviously. We'll go with the... Ooh. 
We got something. I believe that's an animal, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'm not going to say whether it is necessarily an animal or a tree, because I am an ignorant American. So we're going to start putting in mangrove trees, and they really like mangrove trees. A lot. Oh, goodness, I am broke. I am absolutely broke. Alright, well... Wow, I didn't realize that I had spent that much money. Uh, oh no. You stupid penguin. Come here. You. Zookeeper. Uh, zookeeper. Not maintenance worker. Zookeeper. Do that. Place food. Heal the penguin. Uh, there are not enough shelters in the exhibit. Okay. That is easily fixable. Uh, you can hear that and see over there the zookeeper healing the penguin. Restoring him to 100% uh, health, which is great. And at this point in time, never mind, I was going to say at this point in time I'm going to hire another zookeeper, but I just remembered that I don't have any money. I have less than $1,000, and the month is about to end. So, I'm going to wait on that. Once I get the Bengal Tiger exhibit completed uh, to their satisfaction, then I'm going to... Uh... Oh, it is to their satisfaction. No, it's not. I mean, they say, yeah. They said for a sec that it was fine, and then right away it wasn't. Um, once I get their exhibit with enough foliage in it, then I'll hire another zookeeper. And, I just would like to point out, what I was mentioning before, they guests didn't really have a reason to go over... I put the aviary backwards. That's why it wasn't doing anything. Well, ignore what I said earlier about this not having enough gravity to pull away from the reptile house and the restaurant. I am just dumb. So let's set that back up. And oh my goodness, 10,000... Excuse me, I had to burp. $10,000 of private donations. Uh, I believe there is a way... So this has gotten $112 of donations. This has gotten 1300 in donations. This has gotten 600 in donations. Ooh, venomous spiders. That's the reptile? No. Insect house. Uh, even though arachnids are not insects. Anywho, private donations come in based on uh, these indicators right here. The higher these are, the more private donations you get. But it's also really random. Uh, never take it at face value that if this goes up in a given year or in a given month that you are you will get a lot more money in private donations because that's just not true at least not in my experience so here we're going to put in mangrove trees until they are happy oh see if you go back or if I place another one you can see the normal Bengal tiger is happy but the white Bengal tiger isn't uh, with me putting more other animals are sick more foliage. Okay, so there is a balance. So I want to keep an eye on the bangle tiger, or the white bangle tigers, to make sure that they're not getting unhappy. And check on the bangle tigers. Needs more foliage. So as you can see, I had it backwards uh, from what it actually is. I thought the white bangle tiger uh, likes more foliage. It turns out it's the normal Bengal tiger. And I'm going to buy my extra zookeeper now because animals are starting to get sick and when animals are sick it detracts not only from their happiness and health and lifespan but from other animals in the exhibit as well. And so yeah our white Bengal tiger is very sick. That's not good. But he is getting healed. You can hear that little tinkling sound. And that means that he's getting healed. Okay, so the 
Normal Bengal Tigers are happy. Good. So now everyone is happy, they're coexisting, and hopefully when the month of June year 2 ends, we will get a large sum of money and another award for housing uh, an endangered species alongside a non-endangered species. Hopefully. That's the plan, at least. So, as you can see, this area is completely emptied out. No one's going over here. Everyone's staying here, around the Bengal tigers, around the gazelles. So, this gravity is pulling them. But it's pulling them away from the entrance. So, as people enter, they're going to start filling these other spaces. And that is my timer. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, I had a great time doing this. Our Bengal tiger is giving birth. Everything is going well, so we're going to pause. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you have advice or just, you know, want to speak your mind, leave a comment. If you want to see more, please subscribe. This has been Vern Kerrigan with Let's Play Zoo Tycoon, Episode 3, 4, 4, Episode 4. See you next time.